This is the Criterion Creeps podcast, and tonight we are talking about The Cranes Are Flying from 1957, directed by Mikhail Kalatozov. Uh, the tagline for the film? The compelling story of a girl's impassioned search for happiness. And the synopsis for the film. Veronica and Boris come together in Moscow shortly before World War II. Walking along the river, they watch cranes fly overhead and promise to rendezvous before Boris leaves to fight. Boris misses the meeting and is off to the front lines while Veronica waits patiently, sending letters faithfully. After her house is bombed, Veronica moves in with Boris's family into the company of a cousin with his own intentions. <laughs> this is the letterbox description? Yeah. This is it's the, not very good. It's not very accurate. <laughs> Sending letters? What are they talking what? about? Like, there's a lot of waiting. There's a, there's a lot of waiting? Yeah. What the fuck is going on here? Is that it? Or is there more to this? That, that's it. It's pretty bogus. Pretty bogus. So this is a movie uh, I had never seen before. I uh, wasn't really ever too familiar with it. Um, mm-hmm. Hey, RJ, have you looked at the DVD cover for this movie? Uh, I've seen the letterbox cover. Is that the same as the DVD cover? Uh, it is different, I do believe. Well, I'll check out this DVD cover, but why don't cool. you describe it for me? Well, I'd describe it as a classic Criterion-style cover of its era. The kind of like squares geometric forms blocks of color in it uh close-ups of the characters and uh accurate Mm. black and white uh very of its era um but what does this tell us about the movie not much it's about a female character she looks longingly beautifully out into the distance there's some Mm -hmm. sort of uh crumb bum looking man in red desperate and wet looking and there are literally cranes flying <laughs> does uh russia have cranes <clears throat> uh this film says yes that's interesting i've never seen one in real life have you a crane yeah mm, i feel like i must have perhaps at a zoo <laughs> i typed in where and uh my google automatically corrected to where do cranes live so uh they're on the ball here. Uh, they are AI. absent from Antarctica and mysteriously South America. What does that mean? They're absent from those places? So does that mean they're everywhere else in the world? I guess. East Asia is the center of crane diversity <laughs> with eight species, followed by Jeez. Africa with five species. Okay. So I guess Asia and Africa, they are quite prevalent. Mm-hmm. All right, um, well, yeah. more you know. So the title of this song, uh, this title of this song, the title of this movie uh, derives from this kind of like song, kind of like, kind a, like a nursery rhyme. Nursery rhyme thing going on between the two characters. Yeah. Yeah, between uh, Veronica and say. Boris and their, their whimsical adventures in Moscow. Skipping around, getting sprayed by cleaning trucks. It's all fun and games, all shot in <laughs> these weird... Uh, this like high angle, like almost like a not fisheye lens, but like it's super like uh, foreground uh, gimmick going on throughout the whole movie with the camera work. Anyway, <laughs> so mo- RJ, this is a uh, this movie's about war and how war is bad and how it ruins lives and it's no well, good what for is it anybody. Good for? Exactly, RJ. What is war good for? Mm-hmm. Um, so the movie, of course, begins with uh, some whimsy. Mm. Um, it's just like it's a real like oh these two are in love and you know. It's not going to last long. They're going to be torn <gasps> apart by war. All our human lives are just going to, or nothing in the grand scheme of things, sadly. Mm-hmm. Even though it's really the only thing that should matter is our own existence and not the goings-ons between states uh, that are fighting for reasons that are just unknown to most of us. And uh, this is a presentation of that. Um, mm-hmm. So this movie came out in 1957. Uh, it came out four years after uh, Stalin died. And this movie definitely presents a tale that would have gone against the spirit and myth, myth making of one Joseph Stalin and how uh, world war two mm. was run under his watch, which was that your life does mean nothing and you should give it willingly to the state and to the cause of communism, because that's the, the, the paramount thing rather than sort of this. Not tale. A, What's that? I was going to say, it's not a bad message. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm on board with that. Yeah nationalism nothing's ever come badly of that ever never what what is this tale what's this you were deal? going oh you said this tale this movie this movie mm-hmm. comes out from that like it comes out 
years after uh, Stalin's died. This is like so sure. uh, where like movies have really died down quite a bit. Uh, you could go back and listen to our Eisenstein episodes covering mm-hmm. that uh, that Nevsky and mm-hmm. uh, find out more about uh, or I guess Ivan the Terrible. That's what I'm thinking of. Uh, where it's like, yeah, he was making these movies that were like, oh, hey, power corrupts, and then you don't get to make movies anymore. So this is a movie mm. that, like, one could say that, like, the message is kind of like, it's played now, like, because movies like this, we, we get to live in a society where, like, you can tell this message. Everyone can agree, war sucks, but people still, we still go into war. So it's always a wonder of, like, how effective uh, these types of movies can be. Mm-hmm. So while you're making these types of movies, why don't make them look gorgeous and absolutely beautiful like this movie does uh, quite a bit? Um, yeah, so I had never seen this movie before. So watching this, uh, I had a friend of mine, they watched this recently and they said it was really good. So I kind of mm. walked into it. And I can definitely see them, uh, why they like this movie. Uh, they're definitely usually drawn to movies with like a central female character. You spend a lot of time with her. They're sort of like, kind of like a, Godardian quality to the the whimsy of uh, Boris and Veronica running around downtown Moscow, running upstairs, and uh, there's she seems like a fun gal, light and like wants to have fun, full of life. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's like, "Why the hell would you want to go to war?" Fair question. Why would you willingly sign up? But mm-hmm. uh, it's not a question for me. I I'd, I'd be one of those draft dodging bone spur mm-hmm. types. I'm sure. Uh, Ooh, bone spurs, <laughs> eh? Yeah, that's right. Um, nice. but yeah, so this movie kicks off. It's got like, yeah, with a whimsy, these two are jumping into their beds <laughs> face down, uh, mm. which is like, oh, they're like, they're just in love. They're so cute. And then there's some head button of asses. Um, excuse me. Oh yeah. When, oh. when he's, uh, putting up those curtains and they're, they're, right. they're talking and she just runs over there and just charges her forehead right into his butt. Around here, they call that the Jarrett. Whoa, uh, news to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so what can you say about So, yeah. And then, uh, yeah, he goes off to war. And you get this, like, absolutely stunning uh, pan shot amongst all these people, all kind of, like, saying their goodbyes as people are about to march off to war. And you get this, like, mm-hmm. just, like, the sea of humanity with all these faces of humanity uh, just passing through people. And you really get this immensity of, like, oh, this isn't just a story about, like, this couple and their story being split up. It's like uh, a much bigger kind of affair. That's like, no, this is like that, like literally like millions of people's lives are being impacted by this. And they're all like, um, like, I don't know. There's an easy way for people to get kind of hung up in their own head that like, this is their story that they live because I mean, mm-hmm. it's kind of hard to relate to reality beyond that. Cause you only get to live inside your own head. But, uh, with movies, uh, I mean, you can start off with that notion with your, Oh, you're, you're going to live vicariously through these characters for the next two hours. Uh, and so this movie kind of has these moments where you get this, the, her running through crowds and, uh, the fact that it's like their story is just like a drop in it and it doesn't Uh like diminish it in any way. But, and again, you get this, like these amazing, uh, shots that are like, wow, like people don't shoot movies like this at all anymore. They don't use extras. They don't embrace people. And when they do, uh, it seems like they don't do it in the same dynamic way that this movie often does. Where like that Mm -hmm. camera is moving at all times. Um, it's like handheld stuff, but it looks really smooth. It's not jarring because they're using really heavy cameras. Um, but, and while doing this, they're also like setting up these, um, like you have these types of shots, like in like kind of, uh, public areas. But then you have these like sets where like the, the chiaroscuro, the cinematography, uh, the, bl- the use of black and white, uh, mm. the angles and stuff like that are just like stunning. Um, go on, go on. Uh, let's see here. Uh, one complaint I'd have with this movie, and I don't know if it's just like I was watching the DVD of this, uh, is like I found that the sound mixing was iffy, and uh, I think it's like a product of its time. Um, I don't know how much you could do with it, uh, but it's mm-hmm. like probably just limitations of the technology of uh, the Soviets in like doing the sound because like they were shooting stuff outside, so they were obviously doing uh, that ADR stuff afterwards. And so it seems like floaty, weird voices at times that like I was like always finding hard to relate to it. And then sometimes the music is like kind of very bombastic and like almost over the top. Uh, and then, but that seems to die down as the movie gets going into the, uh, the dreary side of war and, uh, the misery part. Um, I could get more into more stuff I really liked about this movie. 
Um, but anyway, so yeah, Boris goes off to war and uh, Veronica's back at home waiting for a letter from him that never comes. And uh, mm. but th- th- she's living with Boris's family and uh, old uh, Marky Mark, the rape king, uh, musicians, <laughs> the, the king of the assholes, the, mm-hmm. the, the real piece of shit. Uh, he puts the, the moves on her unwanted and that kind of forces uh, because it's olden times uh, to her to get married to this guy and her and Boris's family's like, that's the kind of girl she is, I guess. And uh, what about our Boris here? And uh, things kind of continue on from there. Uh, revelations are had, uh, proclamations about uh, mm-hmm. trifling bitches by mm-hmm. uh, the, by the good doctor, uh, dudes kissing babies' bare asses. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, what have you never? Nope. Oh, okay, that's no. fine. I've heard they're soft though. Those babies' butts. The whole baby is. Yeah, that's why they're so lucrative in the black market. Ah, because of people who like touching babies, huh? No, just for the skin. I see. The softness of yeah. the skin. I see, I see. You're twisting this into something yeah. unholy, but it was it was wholesome when I said it. Well, RJ, I think this is a, a fine piece of filmmaking right here. Um, mm-hmm. what, did, what did you think of this uh, Crane's Flying film? This movie bummed me out. Yeah? Real bad. <laughs> um, I So I don't have a, a lot of notes on this, but I was watching it. Uh, and there are a lot of good things, uh, things that you touched on. This movie is visually dazzling. Mm. Ooh, there's so many nice shots. Uh, lots of big crane shots, not just of the cranes flying, but, uh, overhead oh, yeah. shots of people. Uh, you have, um, the striking images, a lot of the ones like when it's the people walking through the town square and they have all those like anti-tank thing spikes. Or whatever the hell yeah. those things oh, are. I, I love how those appear- military spikes. Yeah, the tank traps or whatever they're called. Mm-hmm. Yeah, those things like that. I love how like it, there's like the weird setup where it's like them just running through Moscow and it's like, oh, it's peace times. Everything's great and it's wide open streets and you don't mm-hmm. think anything of it. But then as soon as like war is declared, those things just start appearing and there's more and more of them. I love mm-hmm. that touch. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, there's a lot of very nice shots with that. Uh, there's also um, the framing and like the use of light for everything that's filmed in this is so pretty. Uh, there's so many nice, like you said, the black and white shots and uh, the way the framing is, it all kind of, it all looks so much better than what people do now. Um, I, I really liked the use of lighting in, in this where there was either like back lights or I don't know, front lights. I don't know what that would be called, but um, you either have a character and then the light is coming from behind them or you have the light like right in front of them, and it really ma- it makes like really striking images. Um, what a yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, no, I know what you're. But yeah, but, yeah. It, it's very but str- like but it looks great though, and it it's like people try to do that, and then other people's stuff just looks like shit. So do you think it's because it's in color? Maybe. Yeah. Maybe, but I do I do think that uh, this movie looks really crisp. Uh, like not not like. Sometimes we watch old movies and you're like, it's a little grainy. It's like, but uh, what are you going to do? This movie's like 100 fucking years old. What are you going to do? Uh, this movie's pretty old and uh, it looks super crisp. Uh, everything is very clear. Um, it's not grainy or static or anything like that. And I think that's a big part of it as well. And you so just you watched the, this off YouTube, right? I did watch this off of YouTube. That's yeah. correct. Uh, I had to get creative with this because uh, there was only one YouTube that had the appropriate subtitles. But when I tried to put it on my TV, the format of the screen would cut out some of the subtitles. Mm. Uh, so I had to do some MacGyvering to get this thing to actually work. Um, I won't get into it. But uh, you could say that maybe I am the real hero of uh, World War Two. Too bad this isn't the Remembrance Day episode, and uh, people could have really uh, appreciated that. Um, I don't know what I'm talking about anymore. This movie looks great. Uh, I really liked it. Um, it's got some fancy shots, too. Like, uh, there's that tracking shot where a uh, girlfriend is just running through the crowds with her flowers, and the camera's just kind of following her around. Uh, I was like, hey, it's pretty neat to see that in this movie. Uh, you have a few, like, fancy scenes like that. Uh, but then 
So technically, this movie is very pretty. This movie bummed me out. Yeah, uh, yeah. Get back to the lead. So here. hard. Uh, I was watching it and I was like, all right. Uh, so like, dude's gonna go away. He's like, he's like clouded by his uh, patriotism that he he's gotta go. And she just can't understand it. And so it's like the women are like, why do you have to leave? And the men are like, we must. We must protect our country. And and then like even the family is like, well, not you. They're like, yeah. you were the good one. Why would you have to leave? And he's like, because it's the right thing to do. And uh, I feel like in that setup, some of it, I kind of felt like he was the asshole where uh, she's telling him the story where she's like, yeah, this guy was talking to me today, which is like. That's kind of shitty, too. But like she was just playing around, I think. And then uh, she's like, aren't you jealous? And he goes, I don't have time to be jealous. And uh, he's like, I'm going to the army. And she's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Where, where's all this coming from? And he's like, I'm joining the war. And it like, comes out of nowhere. And then he's kind of like he's kind of shitty about it where he's like, I'm going to hide this note in the squirrel. <laughs> She'll find it. She'll find it eventually. And you're like, will she, though? It's like, why not just tell her this stuff mm-hmm. up front? But I guess that's young love, man. He thought he was being romantic or like sly or some shit like that. But uh, I thought that guy kind of came off as an asshole. Uh, And then you just and then the rest of the movie is just raining shit on uh, this poor woman where uh, you're like, all right, yeah, she's super bummed out. I would be bummed out, too. That sucks. And she's like she's going and but her parents are like nice and you're like oh what nice <laughs> loving parents and then it's just like bombed fucking blitzkrieg right out of existence yeah, what a right what a what a reveal to her like running into the mm-hmm. burning building and there's like that kind of weird like kind of invisible cut to the black as she like opens up the door and reveals the 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 uh, apartment and you have yeah. like the, the clock still ticking and everything Smoldering else is just gone floor. it's all oh, so good yeah so uh yeah, very good. So you get that and you're like, ooh, shit. You're like, that kind of sucks. And then you're also <laughs> you're also seeing like the kind of hit that gets in, like imposed on other people. Like the other family is like doctors and you have the daughter or like the girl in that family who is like going to do lots of like crazy shit. And even even the main girl, like she was going to be an architect or an engineer or something. And then once the war hits, they're like, have you thought of your career? And it's like, I'm going to go work in the war factory, I guess. <laughs> And you're like, oh, bummer. Uh, but yeah, her parents get blown up. And then she has to like live with the boyfriend's family. And you're just like, okay, yeah, things aren't bad here. And then that place gets bombed. And you're like, ooh, is someone else going to die? And then you see the craziest or like the most crazed sex eyes, those rape eyes from that dude when the light hits him just right. And he's like, uh-oh. Or you are like, uh oh, he's like, uh huh. And you're just like, oh no, is this girl going to get raped now? And she does. And you're like, oh man. And then you see like the shitty dude in the war and he's like, I'm going to be the hero. And then it's like, no, you're dead. And you get like the montage of like falling. The, 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 yeah, the life that he was kind of hoping to have. And it's like absolutely stunning. It, that is like yep. I, I think one of the best montages I think in the Criterion Collection up to this point. Like I was just like completely like blown away by how like mm-hmm. be- beautifully done that thing is. Like the it works so well. Like other people have tried doing stuff like that, and it, it always feels clunky. And like this was just like wow. <laughs> like the use of sound, mm-hmm. like just drowning out everything else. Like the the way the movie like I was mentioning before, like the that weird like lens that they're using for a lot of it where everything's kind of like just wrapped around like it's almost like a sphere like it's almost like a fisheye but everything's in mm-hmm. the foreground and like everything's just moving and spiraling in on itself and like you have, you have the wedding and you have this like whole future ahead of them and it's like none of that's happening because you just got shot in the middle of this like whatever ger- ger- German Russian forest swamp that like it, that you see in the movie Come and See as well and it's like mm-hmm. gotta be like one of the most depressing places on earth it's in like Ivan's child childhood as well like and it's mm-hmm. always like it's just like i don't know it's a part of the world that like i want to visit just to see if it's exactly the way it's shown because mm-hmm. it must be but like my god <laughs> yeah exactly so you like cut to him and you're like see this is what you get for standing up for something you believe in just cower in fear like the rest of us yeah uh so you get that and then it cuts back to 
uh, this poor woman uh, getting shamed into marrying this guy. And then you, you see the frustration with everyone else in the family. And you're like, oh, shit. You're like, where's this movie going now? <laughs> and then the rest of the movie happens where it's just like, oh, yeah. So she has to marry him. And then now she's got a really shitty life. And she's kind of and... still banking that Boris is coming back. Yeah, she's always hopeful. She's always yeah. there's a glimmer of hope with her. Yeah. Uh, but then every every other turn, it's just like, oh yeah, you suck, uh, yeah. and you should feel, or it's like you're a bad person and you should feel bad. Working at the hospital, getting yelled at by like irate soldiers who are like blinded and depressed and maimed, and they're getting dumped by their girlfriends. Uh, and then you get that amazing speech from uh, mm-hmm. Theodore, the, man. <laughs> when he's just like, who gives a shit? He's like, if if she was some kind of hoe that would like leave a man of honor, mm-hmm. fuck her. Yeah. Uh, that's a quote. That's verbatim what he says yeah. in this thing. So uh, he, he's kind of really laying into it. We're like fully aware that she's like right beside him. And then you're like, oh, man, you feel so bad for well, her. Time to die. <laughs> time to die. Yeah, she goes to the bridge. She's like, I'm just going to jump off of this thing. Right in front of the train. And, or, yeah, like I, I thought she did jump in front of the train for a second because, like, the camera kind of dizzies you a yeah. little bit. Uh, and I was like, good. <laughs> I was like, good. Maybe she should have died because her life sucked. So I would have. It's like I don't blame her. And then you f- you meet this poor boy and then named, more shit named happens. Named Boris or named Boris. Uh, and then like her trying to help this kid just leads to more shit. Uh, and then it's just like, it just really bums you out. This whole movie is like an endurance race of shitty things happening to this girl that you kind of like, you kind of want to root for it, even though her before boyfriend was kind of shitty too, but she's very nice and spunky. She's mm-hmm. tough and spunky, Jarrett. Yep. Just and, like and, we like them. And how she finds out that uh, Boris is dead the first time. Very offhand. <laughs> like, oh, now I have to go find uh, his her boy or her girlfriend. It's like, oh, mm-hmm. that's me. It's like, oh. It's like, you're... oh, that's what we did. Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, I don't know. And then you get the parade at the end. You're mm-hmm. like, the, the water is over. And, it, and for her, it's like, but it, the war will never be over. For her. But then you get this final kind of moment that kind of turns it all around. I guess, kind of. Yeah. But uh, it, I think this movie is just a major bummer. And uh, I like, I think technically and uh, film craft, uh, I really like the way that they shot a lot of the stuff. And it's a very well put together movie. But uh, it really bummed me out to the point where I was like, I don't really want to watch this again. <laughs> it's a good movie. Like, not that it's bad. It's a good show. But I was like, I don't want to I don't want to feel bummed out again for another like hour and a half. And um, I think there was a quote in this that like summed up stuff very nicely where it's the dad. And he says, uh, life in this world is not yet what uh, we would like it to be. And then everyone gets sad. And it's like, yeah. And it, it's, it just never will. What a sad, depressing world well, this place is. There's like, yeah. And there's like the depressing thing because uh, what's Steppen, uh, Boris's boy, that's oh, who, yeah. who brings who's like, oh, yeah, you know, he's dead, right? And uh, they're, they're passing out the reason. He has this like big rousing speech. It's like the reason this, like, it's like kind of the nice thing where it's like, yeah, we won this war, but we shouldn't forget the people who died in fighting <laughs> this war. And this is much about them. And that we fight this war so that there will be no more wars. And I go, Oh, mm-hmm. I mean, we were kind of, we were kind of there for some of us and then, uh, I don't know anymore, but, uh, yeah, it's still horrible in many, many places in this world. So well, yeah. when your solution comes in the final solution, mm. uh, it'll maybe put an end to all of this nonsense. Yeah, that's right. The one you've talked about at length on forums. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, uh, it's a very good show. Uh, I liked it quite a bit. It's uh, it's very pretty. But uh, yeah, this movie really bummed me out, Jared. What a downer. That's okay. I'm, which I'm, which is fine. Like I I have nothing against like downer movies, but I was watching it. And I was like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why I watched Mel Gibson afterwards. I was like, I really need someone to cheer me up. Yeah, I want someone to be more suicidal than me right now. Yeah, exactly. And he, you know what? He did the trick. <laughs> Going to kill himself in a trailer. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It's uh, it's very good. It's very pretty. It's, uh, man, war is tough. 
Where, where's <laughs> bad? It's a tough break. Man, where, where, where's where's a tough place for you? Don't don't be in war there, baby. Yeah. And you're like, yeah, that's true. You shouldn't be in war there, baby. Uh, bummer, and uh, it's very sad, but uh, good stuff. Nice Russian cinema. So, what kind of person, RJ, hates this movie? Communists. Well, I think I think they'd like this movie, but you know what? So this movie actually has no like one star reviews with like words to them. How many people have seen this movie? Is my ah, second question. Quite a few, but uh, we got some two and a half stars. That's where it starts at the lowest. Florian Weigel. <laughs> Sela, uh... <laughs> it's not a real name, is it? Yeah, sure it is. Okay. Uh, sec- second, uh, Kalatazov, uh, and once again, the cinematography and handheld shots are astonishing, though mm. Uroveski's camera wasn't as unmoored as it would be in <laughs> I Am Cuba. <laughs> Come on. What are you talking about? Uh, unmoored. The subversive aspects of the film are of historic importance, but often play way too didactic. The melodrama was sometimes great. That death scene was one of the didactic. best I've seen in a long time. But the film relegated uh, Tatiana Samolova more and more to playing the same note, which she nonetheless played beautifully. Add to this mm-hmm. the rape scene and shaming her into the marriage, and it leaves enough of a bitter aftertaste to drag this one down a bit. If mm. I Am Cuba was a C plus, this is closer to a B minus. Uh, yes, I Am Cuba is a future Criterion creep from the same director. It's fine, but I mean, no one's talking about that. Well, uh, this made is. up this made up person named Florian Wagel. Uh, their favorite movies are The Misfits from the '60s, The Umbrellas of Cherbourg. Yep, don't know what that is. Possession, really? one of your favorite movies. Mm. And a very, very future creep in the mood for love. Whoa. That's this person's kind of... It's a pretty good spread of movies. It's pretty good. This person's got not bad taste, but uh, they just gave First Reformed five stars, which I feel like you oh, would have boy. take uh, oh, qualms man. with. I feel like I'm the outsider on that one. But, you might uh, be. I don't know. But I don't know. Uh, they don't have a lot of five stars, and most of them look okay, but uh, Begotten five stars, which I, I don't know. Uh, Raw, also five stars, mm. which uh, I, I disagree with. Mm. But um, whatever. Okay. Matthew Cheney, son of Dick. I don't know. <laughs> Two and a half possible. stars. Some magnificent cinematography in a film that is otherwise a fairly straightforward melodrama about the Russian home front during World War II. Thanks, Matt. Is that it? That's it. Hey, you might like Matt. They just gave First Reformed one star. Ooh. They also just gave Hereditary half a star. That's Whoa. a little. That's yeah. a little low. Yeah, I Ooh, I, we lost them. Five stars Pacific Rim. The the like Gelmer Gelmer yeah. one. Yeah, Ooh. five stars Miami Vice from Michael Mann. No doubt. I see some people uh, like that movie. Favorite films include. <laughs> Uh, Sancho the Bailiff, uh, Fox Sancho. and His Friends, Domino. What? Oh, That's no one's favorite. Oh, no. And uh, Creep Favorite, The 400 Blows. Yeah. This Domino. God yeah, damn. what is that about? They're, this person's five star movies are all over the fucking place. Like Mr. Turner, 12 Years a Slave, Melancholia, Lady Eve, Vertigo, all, like- Psycho. I wonder if they're even, yeah, those, those movies are all uh, from like a few years ago, too. Those big Rio movies. Bravo. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, Elevita, two and a half stars. Why does no one ever mention it contains friend zone jerk rapes main heroine to force her to marry him and everyone blames her now for not being faithful to her lover who went to war trope? I was so unprepared and disgusted when they went there. Honestly, fuck this movie. Um, the classic. Is that it? That's it. I don't like this person immediately because they review movies that aren't out yet. Uh, they reviewed the live action move on film that is not out for two years. Uh, it's their most popular review with 105 likes. It says, bring back bisexual legend Li Shang, you cowards. Don't know what that means. Uh, since this is the first reformed podcast, uh, they just gave first reformed three and a half stars. Favorite movies include Stoker, Gone Girl, Handmaiden, and Princess Mononoke. A lot of anime in their favorite films, actually. Yeah. 
And um, Spy Kids too. What the fuck? The Mummy, Sleepy Hollow. The fuck is going on here, Jarrett? Uh, it's just a lot of Disney stuff and a lot of anime. <laughs> well, I-, I wanted to know what other movies have the friend zone jerk rapes main heroine to force her to marry him, and everyone blames her now for not being faithful to her who went to war trope. I want to see what those. What, what are the other movies that have this trope? Well, their half star reviews. This Elevita are love me if you dare. I have no idea what that is. Sixteen candles, unsane, and silver linings playbook. Oh. Yeah, I could see this person not being a fan of Unsane. Yeah, uh, also one star for Pretty in Pink. Just a real John Hughes hater for some reason. Oh. Uh, one star to Neon Demon. One star to Enemy. One star to We Need to Talk About Kevin. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I can see arguments for all those, even though I don't disagree. Sure. I don't know. You, you sound tired. It's, we've been recording forever. <laughs> it's true. It's you ex- very true. You exhaust me, sir. Good. But yeah, Cranes Are Flying. Gorgeous movie. Gorgeous. Very true. But maybe soul-crushingly depressing. <laughs> oh. oh. So. Yeah, it's a bummer, man. But she's so whimsical. Why are yeah, you? Yeah, that's why it's so sad, though, because she it kills her spirit, man. It kills our, our collective spirit. Yeah. Man. Oh. After the break, someone finds that photo of RJ in my pocket and teases me about him. So I so I punch him, and then I get shot in the head. Well, thanks for and standing we, up and, for me. And we never get podcast again. I would keep going without you. I can do I can do the Jarrett. Oh hey RJ, what do you think about this? Oh yeah, good job Jarrett. <laughs> yeah, thanks thanks RJ. Yeah, just watch out for my cousin Mark. Is that what he sounds like? He sounds. Oh, like... the rapist. <laughs> oh okay. <laughs> Gotcha. Uh, Woo. Woo. 